Hi folks, welcome to SoCal Prep Report. I'm Carlos Pena and welcome to this special edition of Coach's Corner. With me to my left, I have Dr. George Hanshaw, Sports and Performance Psychology. Welcome. Thanks Carlos, appreciate being here. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm happy you're here. And to my right over here, I have Herman Carvalho, Educator, Coach, Political and Military Science. Welcome to the show. Thank you Carlos, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited you guys are here. We, we have a, two very, interesting topics you know we're going to talk about helicopter parents but first we're going to talk about parents at games and most of the times it's you know little league little league you know you know soccer um big problem nowadays you know parents getting out of out of control here let's take a look at this video um and you'll see what i'm talking about keep her just no no what were you thinking whoa Gentlemen, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? I mean, that, that's pretty classic of what we see in a lot of games nowadays. Dr. George, what do you have to say about that? The, the video kind of says it all, and I love the question, what were you thinking? Well, if you notice all the chatter before that, they weren't allowing their own children to think, because isn't that why they're in sports? To learn how to make decisions, recover from sometimes bad decisions, but be able to be flexible and know that they can make decisions. So by saying, what are you thinking? Well, you're not allowing them to think because you're taking up all that head space and you want to really just back away from that and let them think, let them make decisions and mistakes. Right, right. and, and that's, that's what sports is all about, especially at, at such a young age. I mean, nobody's getting a, co a college you know, scholarship right there and then. You know, it's all about letting the kids explore, fail, and learn. Absolutely. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, I, I wish I could say that that, that video is a, a one-off incident and, and you can go to right. any field at any sport, any level, and unfortunately at, at, at a teenage or youth or youth, it, a youth level, you'll see that same, um, the same comments, the same feedback, the same parents on the sideline, um, I think contributing more than what they, 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 they probably need to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unfortunate. It, yeah. it happens yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it, it goes back to... You know, the kids, let the kids have fun, you know, and, and I know we, we've talked about this on the show, you know, a couple times, you know, it creates more anxiety than anything. Is, is the child really learning anything right. from that? You know, one thing that I find interesting is when you hear comments like that, I always think, okay, what are you taking away from that child and what are you replacing it with? Mm -hmm. And they're taking away their ability to make a decision, recover from that decision, and they're simply replacing it with, you're not good enough. I have to make all your decisions for you because you're not good enough. And I bet you see that every day probably, Armand. Not only do, do, does the kid um, lack that ability to make decisions on his own, um, but they, they, they burn out. They burn out very fast. They, you see kids at a high rate by the age of 13, 14, I see it with our club teams. They lose, the club teams lose their players. Mm -hmm. And they go for about a two year rut where the kids just simply don't want to play anymore. Let me ask you, as, 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 as a teacher, Sorry. do you see kids in your classroom or other classrooms or at school that show signs of the anxiety of sports? I, I do. Um, I have a uh, very athletic, very capable, um, very high level a uh, player, she's a female, mm -hmm. who's come to me and confided to me that she no longer wants to play the sport that she's played since she was a kid. And my approach to her is, why? Is it, do you, are, you no are you no longer having fun? Did you ever have fun? Are you just being too, is there too much pressure for you? Mm -hmm. That, I think, and, and it's not just her, I think it's just, uh, I want to find the root of the cause, but it, right. it, it's everywhere. It's, it, uh, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned that because later on in the show, we're going to talk about it. And part of that issue is, is helicopter parents, um, as the Canadians say, that curling parent, you know, the sweeper, <laughs> um, the snowblower parent in, in the UK. We'll get to that subject later on. But yeah, there's a lot of smaller issues that we don't see, isn't there? Uh, and, absolutely. You know, uh, some of the things I think parents can do to, to avoid being that parent, you know, it's uh, don't coach your child on the way to the game. There's, you see a lot of, you know, dads tend to do it a lot. Driving, all right, son, I want you to uh, make sure you check your shoulders and pass the ball correctly. That Be happens a lot. Before the game, 
you know, the, the, the pre-game report, I guess, and then the yeah. after-game report, the kids get it all the way home, of what they get did correctly, yeah. what they should have done better, what the refs did wrong, it's what their coaches did wrong. just putting way too much pressure on a child to perform. Way Wait too, so you're taking a very low stakes game that should be fun and be giving a lot of life lessons in that game mm -hmm. and making it a high stakes uh, test of, of life when it's not even close to being that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it, it's teaching them coping skills with, you know, having resiliency with society. Well, it's, right. a, it's a game. It's a game. It's a game. It's, game. it's, much, more than a, it's much more than a game. I mean, they're learning social skills. They are. Right? But at the root of it, it's a game. And kids play games to have fun. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the fun of it is being taken away. And, and, I, and it's become more of a business rather than just a game. It's become sure. a, right. a, yeah. almost of a rites of passage of sorts. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you know, the parents are looking for, for well you know the pay to play mentality i know which is very near and dear with you yes, and, it is. and uh that that anxiety that stress causes a lot of issues and and yes, yes in, the, in the united states we have we have an issue with that pay and play Absolutely. um you know there's other things too with uh the yelling at the games the body language you know um the kids develop this body language as a matter of fact i saw just recently a, a video of one of the college coaches you know, they look at body language a lot. Why is that kid acting that way? You mm -hmm. know, um, what do you have to say about body language? You know, body language speaks more than, more than words. And when you couple it with uh, the language that you heard uh, on the video earlier, you, you know, that, that kid sees their parent doing that. Mm -hmm. And then what they're doing where we could kind of see this in school as well is they think everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's where the stress comes in. Mm -hmm. Because if I have to be perfect, the, all I'm doing is kicking the ball. <laughs> if I have to be right. perfect every time, you know, there, there's more things in well, play than just me kicking the ball. Mom and dad are paying, they, they're paying a lot of money. It right. better be perfect, right? It I better mean, be right. Play, well, but, you know. What do you have to say about uh, that? The I know pay to play I... system is, uh, it, and it's the reason we kind of developed the club and we have coaches that have the right mindset, but um, you've got a $17 billion industry in youth sports. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you can divide that up by soccer, football, baseball, however you want. But it's, it's being sustained by these parents that are investing, quote unquote, mm -hmm. in their children. True. Um, and, and so I think, personally, I think that's where the, the main, I guess, reason why parents are so involved on the sideline because it is an investment. They yes. see it as an investment. They see it as an investment. They see it yeah, as an investment. Absolutely. Yes. You know, they're putting a lot of money into that kid. They want him to do their best, but they, they, ha they, they need to remember, you know, long-term effects. It's just psychologically, is, it's, is it good for that kid? Uh, and they, they need to define what, what is their best. Because there's no professional out there that's perfect every moment of the game. Exactly. They, they need to really think about and define what is best. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, if you're 10 years old uh, and you're not making a mistake on the field, then you're simply not doing enough to grow. Right. So that, that kind of mentality is going to going to actually yeah. hinder growth of your child. Par parents are, are simply becoming overbearing parents and mm -hmm. taking away conflict resolutions for those kids. Right. You know, which is going to lead us into our next topic. When we come back, we're going to take a short break and we're going to we're going to we're going to talk about these helicopter parents. Let's talk about the parents. It's it's, All right. it's uh, it just starts there. So just don't uh, show my video, please. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, uh, don't go anywhere. Come right back. Helicopter parents coming your way. Hey, Kevin, you thinking about retirement? I'd love to, but I'm pretty busy with all this. Yeah, hey, let's meet our retirement coach, Avo. He does seem to have a lot of ideas. A whole Avo bet full. Visit aceyourretirement.org today. Nice talk. Thanks. Welcome back, folks. Once again, I'm Carlos Pena. With me, I have Dr. George and Mr. Herman Carvalho, educator extraordinaire. Um, here we go. Helicopter parents. UK, they call them snowplow parents. In Canada, they call them, uh, uh, what do you call it? The curling parents, you know, the sweepers. This is, this is really, you know, near and dear to me because uh, it, it really interferes with coaches. It interferes with a whole lot of things, those overbearing parents. Uh, I'm gonna start off by reading a quote uh, from Bo uh, Brooke D. Lynch. Uh, she wrote an article called Out of Control Parents uh, in Youth Sports. And in it, she talks about out-of-control parents simply having very low coping management skills. Mm 
Okay, now we're talking about the parents here. <laughs> you know, um, they use youth sports to gratify their egos. Okay, unable to cope with the emotions of the ups and downs of a youth game. Um, they see parenting as competition. Now that, what, that one right there caught my eye. Um, and look at money spent as an investment, which you, taught, you, know, you touched on a little bit earlier. This is very interesting. You know, it's, they almost call it a disease, you know, these helicopter parents. It's, all, it's egos. D delusional parent disorder. Wow. <laughs> can yeah. you, can you Delusional parent disorder. It's when the, the parent, is, is, for lack of a better term, is trying to live through their child's sports experience. Mm -hmm. And they're delusional on how good that chi their child is. They think they're so good they're beyond coaching. So, you know, that's when all kinds of issues come on. My hmm. child's great. My child's fantastic. He's better than every other, you know, nine-year-old out there. My nine-year-old right. should be playing with 15-year-olds, right. things like that. They, yeah, they you have know, a I, very I, inflated I, view. They, they also talk about socioeconomic status. You know, hey, look at my son. He's a very good player. Therefore, I'm a higher elevation, you know, elevated social status than than you because your your kid's not as great right. you agree I, or what do you uh, think i do um i think is i mean entertainment industry is huge uh and sports is an entertainment and i think a lot of parents um assume that if they can invest time and money and make sure their kids are getting what they need in sports they'll achieve that pro level status mm -hmm. two percent of high school students go on to play ncaa and out of that two percent of those become pros um, so the, 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 the odds that a student or a kid at 10 years old is going to be a professional player in any sport is already against them. Mm -hmm. But then they invest the money into it. So then they have, right. they have you know, that, that desire to see their kids actually achieve something right. good, bad, or indifferent. Right, but you got those parents that are just simply doing everything for the kid. You know, they, they're, they're talking to the coach. You know, the, the coach wants to talk to the player, not the parent. You right. know, the, the essentially what's going on is... The coach is, is trying to talk to the, the kids, but the parents coming along, they're saying, I want the attention. Talk to me, not the kids. This is what, talk to me, here we go. You know, and it creates anxiety and, and actually guilt and shame for the kids. You know, um, the guilt comes, it is. <laughs> the guilt comes when, um, when the kid's thinking of leaving home, going off to college. You got those, those parents that are on them. And then the shame comes when they do leave. You know, what do you think about that? You know, you you hit it right on target, and then not only does the shame come when they when they leave, they're trying to figure out what to do. Those helicopter parents have taken every obstacle out of the way, so they haven't gathered the tools they need to make those decisions on their own. Mm -hmm. So that's when they, a lot of times, come back to the house, and then the parents say, "See, I knew that you needed me. Well, you created that. <laughs> so leave those obstacles. Let them overcome those obstacles on their own with yeah. some maybe guidance and coaching." Right polite, kind I mean, coaching. Sp sports is, is about learning social skills. Yeah. It's not about, you know, well, he's got the trophy. It's just social skills. Can that, how, how does that affect the child in school when, when everything's being done by the parents? Do they, do they learn how to write a good essay? Have uh, you seen that? No. Um, you see kids that struggle. Um, I mean, it affects, it can be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. um, a good sports environment can lead a kid to overcome issues and, 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 and challenges. On the other side, you can have the same parents in your ear emailing and calling the school because their kid is failing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and they don't accept failure. And I kind of have questions like, what happens to that kid when the parent is their, their kind of their barrier yep. and the parent is receiving negative feedback about the kid? What happens then to the kid from the parent? Is that stress put on the kid? I really haven't looked into. Yeah. I, I think a lot of it, though, you know, the focus is always on the kid. The kid, the kid, the kid, the kid. But the problem is the parent that just cannot let go of control. Got to let go. You have to. Yeah, you have. If you want the child, your child, to grow up to be that successful member in society, Indep whatever that means, an independent yeah. member of society doing whatever they do within society as their their gift or purpose for being here, mm -hmm. you you have to let go as a parent and just nurture them as an individual right. and when they are in a bad position or hitting an obstacle, coach them how to get mm -hmm. over it, around it, through it, or under it, yeah, however yeah. it needs to be. Because by being the, the sweeper, what do they call them in the UK? Uh, 
the a current, snow blow, a current, yeah, current parent. Current. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> by, by taking all those obstacles out, you're stealing all that from them. You're stealing their yeah, potential. Yeah. You know. You know yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, parents. I mean, what can a parent do to help? Is there anything they can do? That, I mean, that's a tough question to answer. You know? I, I find, and, and it's funny, uh, when new coaches come to the club, I tell them first you want to have trials for the parents because you need to set the yes. tone with the parents. And it starts with them because many parents mm -hmm. don't know the difference. They don't record themselves. They don't see themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So we tell the coaches, prepare. This is what you need to tell yeah. your parents right off the bat. I'm, set I'm, the tone. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I, I've learned. I always have a parent meeting, and I tell them, look, parents, I don't want to hear anything from you. No coaching, no nothing. Just sit there, watch, and have fun. You know, and you always have that one parent who, who wants to coach and this and that. And I've had other coaches say, well, I, I, let, I let them do that as long as it doesn't go against what I'm trying to coach. And I go, well, now you're giving them permission. You know, uh, and the parent, believe it or not, in, even in college, coaches in college assess the parents. Yes, as, as they should, because you don't want to bring a problem in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you, you yeah. don't want to bring that parent that that's constantly on the phone. That's not no, no. Um, you know, 2015, uh, Mike Bray, who's who's the men's basketball head coach for Notre Dame, he said it himself. Oh, I assess the parents before I offer that kid a spot on my team, or I give him a scholarship because I want to know what kind of parent I'm going to have to deal with. Well, this and, is college level. Yeah, and you know, and if if a coach is putting money on the table of scholarships and things they want a, a a young athlete who can come and and make decisions and be a part of the team and be prepared for all that that all, right. all that they're going to go through in the soccer world um the u.s on the men's side and women since 2012 now at a youth level are having an issue and it's not because they're not athletic not because they're not they're capable it's because on the field those 11 players are lacking the ability to make decisions mm -hmm. yep. where every uh, all the rest of the world the kids play they develop that decision making ability in the u.s we struggle with that. And, and that's because you have yeah. mom or dad yeah. hovering over them not allowing them to fail and learn from their failures and giving them everything you know it's like no let you know let me open that potato chip bag for you um that's that's a helicopter parent you gotta back off you gotta let them play you gotta let them, you know, fall so they can learn how to pick themselves up. Okay. If, you, if you never fall, you don't understand that you can recover. Is there <laughs> is there any kind of treatment for parents that are like that? <laughs> that that's the the well, million dollar question, isn't it? I, I would imagine they, they're not going to take it very well, of, you know, if they're they're told, hey, you need to go see a doctor. Well, the best <laughs> thing—it's not your kid; it's you. <laughs> it's you're the, it's, you're the problem. I think uh, Herman stated it best: is as a coach, just state your expectations from the parents, and once you state those expectations, stick with them. Yep. And uh, if you're a parent, just practice backing yeah. off, yeah, think, relax, yeah. enjoy that. You're supposed to enjoy the time with your with your children. Yes, yeah, you have you have to shape mold and everything else, but think from the perspective of enjoying that time because they're learning from you and they're learning from your actions. Yes. Yeah, and in, in, in some cases, kids will start acting like their parents in the outbursts. And it goes back to what right. we were talking about earlier. You know, those parents that are on the sidelines screaming and hollering, guess what little Jimmy's going to do growing up? Yeah. And then little Jimmy starts blaming his teammates, so little Jimmy's not a good teammate anymore yeah. because he's blaming everybody else. Yeah, true, true. For and it breaks coach, the team down. For us coaches, we, 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 they require us to record ourselves and then while we're coaching. Of course. So some of us think that we don't speak a lot, and then we spend 10 minutes speaking to the players. Mm -hmm. So I think using wow. that and helping record parents and say, hey, we're recording this game, and then show them is what we're having. True, true. This might help. Yeah, you know, gentlemen, there, there is so much we can talk about, you know, helicopter parents. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a little pet peeve of mine. Um, but I understand, you know, uh, some parents are, are having issues coping. Um, you know, there's there's... We just got to learn how to let go of the, of the, the kids and let them play. Um, and apply, uh, Association of Applied Sports Psychology has some good uh, guidelines and tools for parents at all. Great. That's, that's a lot of good information there. Thank you so much. Folks, don't go away. We're going to come right back and, and continue this conversation. There's a lot more we can go. This is a deep rabbit hole. Come back. Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel 
wanted. All right, folks, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, both of you gentlemen, for all that information. But let's talk about something. Let's talk about ego and greed. And uh, we touched on the subject pay to play. And we touched a little bit about, you know, helicopter parents and how they want to feed their ego on that. Yeah. You combine those two. Is this what we're seeing out in the, on the field, the outcome? Parents yelling and screaming and, you know. I think it's, uh, it's human nature not to want to fail. And, uh, and, and especially if it's your own children, you want them to succeed. Mm -hmm. And you can't let them fail. And if they fail nowadays, it seems like parents take it on themselves and say, well, it's my fault, so I have to find something better or I have to fix the situation because mm -hmm. I cannot see my child fail. Right. And so right. it, it does come to... It's a little competition. Oh, it has to be well, competition. My and Jimmy's not going to fail, but his Jimmy's going to fail. And yeah. you know what? And if my yeah. Jimmy's failing, uh, it's not yeah. his fault. You know, yeah. I'm able to pay $300 for a session with Coach X because we're great, and look how great Jimmy's doing Mm -hmm. You know, that, that comes into play a lot when you talk, start talking ego and greed. Social economic status. They start ego. throwing that out yeah. there. And uh, that, that feeds that delusional parent disorder because they think, because they're paying an exorbitant amount of money for one training session that they should be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost entitled. Right. And, right. right. And entitlement. Yeah, that, it, there it goes. Mm. Pay to play. I'm, I'm entitled to play. I'm entitled yeah. to play. I'm entitled to get results. I'm entitled. True. My, my child should be playing first because I, I pay a little bit more. Yeah. You know, um, I sometimes think of those parents that are out there yelling and screaming, do they really understand the game? You know, we see it a lot in soccer, you know, fouls. I, of course, soccer is near and dear to me. It's near to him, you know, to him as well. You know, 50-50 uh, ball, they go after it, a couple elbows fly, and then you have that parent just take that kid out of the field. He's dangerous. I wonder how many of those parents really understand the game. Or have played. Or have played. Or have played, yeah. You know, that makes a big difference. Yeah, I think uh, I, I laugh at my parents. We have a good relationship, but um, I always tell them, any given game, you're going to have one team that's angry at the ref, Unless there's a tie, in which case you have two teams angry at the refs. Mm. And I think it, it, it comes to that because it's, it's difficult to accept failure. But mm. when we were growing up, my dad was never at a game. He, he showed up to one high school game. I scored a goal. I didn't know until I was 30 that he didn't see my goal. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was talking to some parents. Didn't even know I had scored in oh, high school. Geez. But nowadays, parents almost make an extreme effort to be at their... So uh, I don't know if that has to deal with... with, with um, with with just being entitled to say something to the coach or mm -hmm. just being more involved uh, or we our generation maybe didn't you, have I'm glad that you mentioned that you know I'm sorry to cut you off yeah. being involved in today's generation social media it's a lot easier for that parent to get a hold of that coach or that even that ref or that athletic director and you know and say something we're back in our day of course we didn't have that right coaches hey Coach, here's my son. You do what you got to do with him. I'm going to sit up here, and that's that. But it's so much easier for a parent to get a hold of somebody now. You know, what, what does that mean? You know, that, that's great, and that's the world we live in. So now we have, we have to deal with that. We have to work within that span, and I think that just falls back to uh, part of a previous discussion, set those expectations. Mm -hmm. And if parents are contacting you via social media or however, simply – do not respond back because mm -hmm. then if you set that expectation of do not contact me this way up front right. and then you answer them, you just undermined everything that you set up. Yeah, so you just want to set those expectations up right. front of how to communicate and the proper ways to communicate. Because before, mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably the same with teachers, before there was a, a separation between the parent and the teacher, the parent and the coach where there was like a buffer zone or, or area of respect, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, that has seemed to have shrunk or pretty much gone away between parents and teachers, parents and, and coaches that we need to kind of get back. And we do that by setting those, yeah. those, that framework, or those standards of expectations yeah, first. Yeah. The, the expectations is, is very high. I mean, it, all yeah. this ties up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just a big pot and it all goes in there. <laughs> There's so many little things, you know. You know, you got those parents that immediately after the game will 
why'd you do that? You know, the, you know what I'm talking about. Those yes. kids need about 10 minutes or actually let them, let them, you know, decompress. I know you talked about this before. Let uh -huh. them decompress. And when they're ready to talk, they'll talk. You got those parents that are just, man, no. What happened to giving a hug? <laughs> yeah. What and, happened and to giving a hug? And again, that's that, I don't know. Does that fall in the same realm as helicopter parent, or is it different? Do we have a, you know two different things? Helicopter parents and then those parents are just their expectations are so high that they don't give the child time to decompress. Uh, right, and when you think about those parents, they're they're trying to be a coach. You know, be be a parent. Let let the coach coach. If you're paying all that money for them to play, let the coach coach, and you and you just enjoy the fruit of all that labor. Hug them, congratulate them, tell them you love them, Absolutely. love to watch them play, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. If they want to come and talk to you about it, be there with with an open heart and an open right. mind. Yeah. Don't be there as telling them what to do. Just mm -hmm. just be there as as dad or mom. Right. Right. You yeah. know. And to add, if I may, um, for coaches um, to help coaches out, from my experience. Um, you're going to still have parents that are want to be involved. I get them involved. I, I hold them to task. I say, you want to become involved? Bring your cleats, come to practice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I want you to train them this. I want you to keep stats during the game. I want you to record the video. Great. And they learn the game. They, they learn what the process is. And they accept. They learn to accept it because they see the hard work the kids yeah. present. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes my kids, most of the time at my practices, parents don't even show up. Because they know what the expectations right, are. Right. Right. Let, so, me, let me ask you something. As a, as a teacher, how much of your time is spent with a child with an issue from home that, that's related to sports? Do you, do you ever get anything like that? Uh, actually, no. Um, I, I don't have most of the kids that, that participate in some kind of sports aren't the, 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 the students that, that typically I have to call home on. Um, and if they are, they're afraid that if I call home, for some reason, mm. that they'll lose that mm. that that's connection. Very, to that's sport. very interesting. So it, very it is an interesting yeah. dynamic there. But um, uh, the, the the kids that that are committed to a sport, um, it's the benefits yeah. of sports. It's, of course, they're they're a little right. more they're a little more disciplined. They're they're a little more um, uh, focused on in, the task. In, no, they independent as they're, well. They're a little know, more independent, right? So you don't have the issues that you would expect. Um, mm. uh, and I don't see the same parents. I, However, those parents that are involved, and it's odd, those parents that are involved and are probably heavily involved in sports are the same parents we see during parent-teacher conferences mm -hmm. where you would want to see the opposite happen, where the students that are struggling, that aren't involved in sports, you would want to see their parents in teacher conferences, for example. And you don't yeah. see that. In that. Yeah. So it's it kind of like defining that line of where that involvement right. should be versus like what you do with the, any parents want to be involved. Get it, get them involved. Get do them this, involved. do that. Yeah. Give them, yeah. But it has to be where's the, that line. You have to get them involved in, yeah. the, in the right, right place. It Just has like to be anything, the right thing. Yeah. everything in life is a dichotomy. And if you go yeah. too far on either end, you're in the wrong place. So Absolutely. you need to kind of define that. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, folks, you know, there, there's so much we can, and, and we probably bounced around all, quite a bit here, but I think, you know, a lot of the issues uh, we, we touched on are very good. You know, in, in closing, any final words as as a sports psychologist for those just out there? for parents? Just you know, just love your children, embrace them, uh, let them. The reason why a lot of children burn out is because it's not them making the decisions. So just let them make the Indeed. decisions, and you support and coach. You're in a support role when Absolutely. it comes to that, Absolutely. and uh, have fun, have enjoy fun. it. Fun. Gotta have fun. The time's gonna go. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah, it. Yeah, it will. All right, folks. You know, there you have it. Uh, don't don't be a helicopter parent. Just let them be. Let go of control. It's going to be okay. A lot of coaches are, are very well trained. They need those skills, okay? Um, and Mom, thank, thank you, you so much for being thank on you. the show. Thank Dr. You, Dr. Stewart, thank you oh, once thank again. You. Thank you. Folks, thanks for watching. Have a good one.